anyway. Okay, part three. Do software developers and smart contract designers have fundamentally opposite goals? I'm going to argue that the answer is yes. It's pretty interesting, isn't it? How could this be the case? How could they have opposite goals? What are the goals that I'm talking about that are supposedly opposite? Well, I think that contracts are not your typical software. People think that wrongly. It's a deception. You think that, okay, if I can use X to do Bitcoin as well as to do other things, then X just must be better, right? I mean, we've solved the general case, right? How can it possibly be worse? And the reason you might think that wrongly is that with software, it's usually built for one person. And that person wants the maximum amount of control over their feature set. So more flexibility is always good. New stuff is always good. More flexibility is always good. There are no externalities, right? Your ability to do something does not harm anything. The user is not going to be harmed by a feature that they choose not to use. It's very simple. You think, we just add more options, it must be better. But you would be wrong. Bitcoin is what mathematicians would call a mechanism. With game theory, your task is that you start with a game, and then you describe the, you, the equilibria of the game under different solution concepts. So you start with the game and you go to the equilibria. With the mechanism, it's the reverse. You start with the equilibria that you want, and then you work backwards to try to build a game that if someone solved it, it would take you to this equilibria. So Bitcoin, obviously the equilibria was uh, is that everyone converged to the same database state, even though the state itself would be changing as people would submit transactions to it. And so the game involved mining, which is paying people these coins, these fictional kind of units at first, in order to help incentivize them to converge to this state. So far it seems to be working, right? So with software, more is never bad, as I explained on the previous slide. But in the field of mechanism design, it's often the case that less is more, so to speak. And this is a Wikipedia article about called The Price of Anarchy. And I know that we have some anarchists in the Bitcoin universe, but you just have to get over the fact that people sometimes use words to be poetic. This is not literally referring to the political system of anarchy. It is referring to a measurement of the efficiency of a system degrading due to the selfish behavior of its agents. And it has a mathematical definition. This is not about the politics of anarchy or whatever that would even mean. So this is the prisoner's dilemma that we know and love. If you don't know what this is already, you should probably shut this video off and rethink your life. But those of us who do know understand that here both prisoners defect, uh, leading them both to get five years in prison, whereas if they had only cooperated, they could get one year in prison each. Instead of the combined pain is 10, but the combined pain could have been 2. So 10 over 2 is 5. That's the mathematical definition of this price of anarchy. But I'd like to go into a little detail on this here. So here's the same prisoner's dilemma as before. And here's the Nash equilibrium. This, the red player, column player, he can't really play cooperate because defect is always better. Same for the blue row player, reaching this here. There are no contracts in this example. But the row player might think, oh, you know, if only we didn't have this option to defect. And so he says, he creates a contract. I will not defect if you agree also not to defect. So he says he won't do something if the other player does not do something. Contracts tame this price of anarchy concept by subtracting things. They subtract. Okay, that's the point. So as a result, they move over here and they're a lot happier. Now, what's the point is that contracts aren't magic. Okay, they don't create anything. They only operate on the space of human action by shrinking it. They agree to do fewer valid things. Fewer valid things. 
okay? So less trust is required if you have a contract because untrustworthy actions are removed. Freedom is destroyed. Now, I mean, this is hardly news to anyone who understands contracts, but my point is that the software developer wants the user to be able to do more things with their computer. That's the goal of software development. You want to say, here's my software. It lets you order a car with your phone or whatever. Okay? The, the software developer wants the user to be able to do more things. But the smart contract designer actually has the reverse goal. They want, the smart contract designer wants the user's computer to be able to force the user to do fewer things. What the smart contract is is a limitation. It is not an increase. I'll get back to that, but um, I just want to provide an example. This is a funny example. This is sometimes called battle of the sexes in game theory. I won't go into it in great detail, but long story short, the players want to meet somewhere, either at OO or FF. If they don't meet, they, lo they both lose. But one player prefers um, O, OO, and the other player prefers FF. So it's kind of a little bit of tension here about where these two lovebirds should go on their little date or whatever this is. And the funny thing about this is that by adding a new option, an option that both players know that player one will never take, player one ends up winning the game. Now in this case there are also benefits because they avoid these two zeros, they avoid miscoordinating. But it gets kind of weird because we could add another option earlier on and then I've got to tell you I very quickly it becomes impossible to figure out in my view exactly what these players can be expected to do and so what I expect they would do is kind of orbit a lot of confusing nothingness instead of just remain in a very happy point <laughs> I think there would be a lot of chaos so this for those of you who aren't aware this is the Lorenz system uh, it relies on interaction there are three simple equations produce wildly chaotic behavior over time and if you think it's bad with three equations you should just wait as soon as it gets up there it really explodes figuring out how this stuff will behave when it's all interactive we don't really want to add a lot of pieces we want to keep the number of pieces very well defined very compartmentalized very local we don't want them to interact with each other because we don't know what will happen if, if we do that we really can't know Often controls are good. Notice that how this works with Bitcoin. Uh, Bitcoin is everything that a normal database is, but with stuff removed and banned and limited. Transactions with bad signatures are no good. Double spends are no good. The main feature of Bitcoin is that double spends are banned. You didn't need to trust a server to protect you from double spends. You didn't need to trust users not to double spend on an individual level. This is the whole point of Bitcoin. You don't want to be able to do these things. It's it's to your detriment if you're able to double spend because it destroys the trust in the entire system. Uh, Bitcoin is less functional than a normal level DB database. It's a lot less expressive. These are all the rules. Someone else made this. It wasn't me. These are all the rules that um, additional rules that Bitcoin has to follow. And moreover, new rules are added all the time via soft fork, which are reductions in permissions, it's more filtration of the degrees of freedom to which Bitcoin has access. Notice that a soft fork, which is forwards compatible, it means that there was no breach of contract. In contrast, a hard fork breaches the established contract and forms a new one by enabling new things. So what I'm trying to say is that controlling things and limits Controls and limits are good. That's the stuff that contracts are made of. So if we want to have smart contracts, we have to be living in this world of limits. Here's a cool little slide. You can uh, pause it and read it if you want. But uh, just say, in the world of contracts, contracts are for teamwork. Constraints make teamwork easier. Uh, this is a fun note. Uh, so it turns out this is a valid computer program. This is hat tip to Chris DeRose for finding this stuff there's a there's a contest for obfuscated code and it's applied in various ways but 
Um, <laughs> basically, the idea is that you write code that it's impossible to read, and then you try to sneak in various things that it does. Um, I don't want to have to deal with this stuff, but we will have like smart contracts that attack each other that are written like this. So it's just a point to bring up. So I'm going to restate what I'm saying. We want to have this barrier here. Don't think of it as regulation. If that word bothers you, think of it as privatization. And we want the miners to treat each new sidechain or major co smart contract system with the care and respect of a soft fork. We want them to be slow and rare. We want them to be documented and discussed. We want them to be willfully activated. We do, we do not want this stuff to just kind of leak in. We want the miners to understand the sidechain's purpose and how the sidechain will affect their own property, for lack of a better word. Uh, we don't want this situation where there are many frequent sidechains because it would be too difficult for the miners to figure out what's going on. Bet 1, bet 2, bet 3, bet 4. Instead, we want to have the sidechains be topical. So we want to have a sidechain for betting. And then you have all these appear in here as messages, not as individual smart contracts. So again, here's the principle that I established earlier. These entities up here, they need to be aware of how these sidechains can affect them. And if they affect them in a negative way, they need to be able to prevent these sidechains from being activated, which they can do in drive chain. But if we use the skip list, they cannot. So the thing that many people suspected would be a con or a drawback is actually a pro. It's actually a feature. So it's actually immensely important that these, these miners over here be able to steal from this sidechain if they don't like it. Now that is actually a pro and not a con. Conclusion. Don't feel bad about allowing miners to censor smart contracts because that's what they already do. The miners are part of a team that prevents messages from being spread if those messages are double spends, counterfeit, or transactions that are too large or resource intensive. So that's what has already been done. Okay, It's very appropriate that miners be able to ban things. They already do that. Permissionless innovation is good. Permissionless implementation is bad. Uh, we do not want to have a, a, a many smart contracts hop in and out to the point where no one can understand what they are or what they do. Instead, we can have a topical, one large topical smart contract be added on very slowly. And it's this would be for betting. And so instead of all these little messages being thrown in, into the ecosystem, we can just have one and that can have very tightly defined messages. And from there we can have many messages passed back and forth. And we can talk about how to keep the miners from censoring those, which we probably all would agree is desirable. Don't feel bad about needing miners to be involved when smart contracts are added or removed from the ecosystem because someone has to do it and it might as well be them because they are the ones who most directly measure the value of a Bitcoin since they're paid in Bitcoin. So they're the most, they're the, the obvious candidate for that type of thing. And be careful when we upgrade. I mean, we can upgrade this Bitcoin script due to segregated witness. So we have to just be careful about exactly what we achieve when we do that. Okay, thanks. Thanks a lot. This is my Twitter handle, at Truthcoin. This is my email address. As I mentioned, I'm at Block now. Thanks to Jeff Garzik for giving me a bunch of time to make this presentation. Uh, see you later.